which is security and safety okay. one of the things before i um came to kenya was um reading about safety and security especially in nairobi that is not very safe and all but i want to hear from someone who's lived here for almost three years what's the safety and security situation like for you especially as a woman hello my friends welcome back to my channel in today's video we'll be telling you and we'll be discussing what it's like living in kenya as a foreigner as an expert whatever adjective you want to use to qualify it um, that's what we'll be talking about in the video today and to discuss that i have the beautiful amarachi here with me she's a travel blogger she's an expert she's a what other titles <laughs> so um we'll be discussing what it's like so sit back relax and enjoy this video So, Amarachi, welcome to my channel. Thank you. We're so grateful that you've taken the chance and the time to come today to discuss what it's like for you living in Kenya. So, can you kind of introduce yourself to us and you give you plug your website and your, your blog and your Instagram handle? Let's just do that brief introduction. Okay, thank you, Wally, for having me. My name is Amarachi. Um, I am a travel blogger. I have a blog called travelwithapen.com and there I just share my personal experiences traveling as well as tips um, to help other people who are reading uh, visit different countries. And um, my Instagram is Amarachi Ikekwe, it's the same as my name. Well, yeah, I guess that's, that's it about me. All right. And I have to introduce myself as well, or do I need to? <laughs> If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Wale O. I'm a content creator based in Germany and I create content about moving abroad, living abroad, travel and career and so on. If that's your cup of tea, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. And if you would like to follow me on Instagram, you can also do that. It's at Wale O Chronicles and you can do that on TikTok as well. And if you're a returning subscriber, my darlings, you know I love you so much and I'm here for you. And I do all this. I ask people to come for an interview. <laughs> For you, my darlings. Okay, now um, let's get into all the self promo and intro over. Let's get into the questions I have for Amarachi today. So, Amarachi, can you briefly tell us how did you end up in Kenya? You're you're Nigerian, yeah. and uh, you were living in Nigeria before moving to Kenya. So, please give us a brief history of how you ended up in Kenya. Um, okay, so I came to Kenya because of work and also because I got married. Um, <laughs> my my husband got transferred to Kenya and I mean I wanted to live together with them so um, I asked my company as well if I could move and it, this fell this move happened during the COVID era so remote working was a thing and my company agreed for, to the move so that's that's how I found myself here oh ah, lucky you lucky yeah. you because the next question I was gonna ask is about like jobs in Kenya so for you your company moved you based on your request yes. so but do you have any idea what it's like like find trying to find a job in kenya as a foreigner for example do you have any ideas about that so i i don't i don't have a lot of ideas about that um, i'm not very versed with that but i've met a couple of experts couple of uh, nigerians here who have applied just you know looking online linkedin and all the other <laughs> job um portals and also i guess networking and um i feel like there are lots of jobs here for foreigners and even maybe for locals as well and you just need to apply for it and yeah it's not that's not really my area of expertise yeah yeah but you're saying like it's one way to move abroad because we love to talk about moving abroad mm -hmm. on this channel right so one way to move abroad is look within your own company if there's an opportunity for you to work maybe if they have a subsidiary or even to work remotely from another country right yeah so that's also another option or looking for jobs online and applying and trying your luck and seeing if you can get the jobs yes i think if you if your company has like a branch in other countries kenya or anywhere else i feel like that might be one of the easiest ways mm -hmm. to move mm -hmm. if there's an opportunity and it's just the right timing um that's one of the easiest ways to do it um but yes you can also apply online different job portals and see if there are any openings all right so um let's talk about like the first step is finding a job the second step is the visa application process mm -hmm. right so um i think we it, this will be a two-pronged approach approach since your company sent you here so mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell us what the visa application process is like if you already have an employer that is willing to 
transfer you and then we're going to talk about if you're coming on your own what's the visa application process like okay so if you're coming with with an employer usually they would sponsor your um work permit or your residence permit and they'll take care of everything for you but you just need to provide some forms um you need to go to the immigration um office and maybe sign a few things but it's basically quite seamless when your employer is sponsoring your application um i heard that some employers would like if you wanted to if you if you found an opportunity here mm -hmm. Um, because obviously the preference is to Kenyan citizens. Definitely. So some employers might be willing to, um, you know, accept if you're able to, you know, do the whole process of getting your work permit by yourself. Um, I'm not too sure about how that works, but I feel like um, the easiest way is just having a company that sponsors your work permit. So what you're saying is it's actually possible to handle your um visa application or your work permits or your residence permit by yourself i think there are different classes of uh, residence permits in kenya and there are some classes that if you're self-employed you can actually do it by yourself mm -hmm. um what i'm on my company had to um work on that for me but i feel like I, if you talk to maybe an immigration lawyer they can tell you what's available for foreigners so it sounds like um from what you said you were already here when your company applied for the residency permit for you so, or the work permit for you. Yes. So you can, what, from what I understand, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, okay. you can come here with a regular visa first and then when you get here, you apply for your residence permit. Is that how it works? So you can, so I came in with uh, a special pass, which is not necessarily a tourist visa, but it's like, it's not a rest, it's a, it's a form of residence uh, permit, but it's only for like three months. So you can come in with something like that and then have uh, while you're here in the, using that special pass, you can then get like a two year residence permit or a work permit. Mm. So, but, excuse me, but is it possible, for example, to come here on a regular tourist visa and then try to switch? Maybe you find an employer when mm -hmm. you're here. If you're so lucky, yeah. <laughs> wouldn't that be the dream of everybody? If you're so lucky and you find an employer when you're here, you can then switch start the process of applying for the I think you can work do that. Permit. I think you can actually do that. But I don't think it's something I would advise because I feel like it's better to come here with the right visa. Because mm -hmm. you could come with a tourist visa and I think the maximum you can stay is ninety days. Yeah, three months. And if you're if you then come in like without having a job at hand, it's a bit risky, I think. Mm. So maybe if you already have that job and you come in with like a regular visa and then the company can standardize it i think that's possible uh, but you know it's it's better to already have that before <laughs> before coming in mm. i would say all right um so let's move on to finding accommodation because of course when you're moving to a new country after your visa or in in con in conjunction i don't know why i wanted to use this big <laughs> word today but in conjunction in german we say gleichzeitig um at the same time that's the mm -hmm. simple word i was looking for that just flew out <laughs> of my brain but at the same time as you're applying for your residence permit and your visa application process you're also trying to find a more long-term accommodation to live in so can you tell us what's the process of finding an accommodation as a foreigner where do you start from if your company is not handling it for you for instance and you're doing it by yourself so i think that there are many resources in kenya that you can use um the first one i would say is that there's a there's a large expert community in kenya and they have groups in on facebook they have groups on whatsapp if you can maybe if you know someone who's already here you can just like ask them to shoot, point you like point you in the right direction tell you where these groups are so i feel like that would be the first place um, as an expert i would look into um, there's so many advertisements of like available accommodation and they're very helpful generally um, I think also like platforms like Airbnb um, also have like long-term accommodation um, options that you can also check. So if I was an expert coming into Kenya for the first time, I would probably look at these two platforms mm -hmm. first, try to get into those groups or just look into Airbnb. And you can do it either way, like you can get a short-term lease on Airbnb while you're looking for something more long-term. Mm. Yeah. I think uh, uh, I would probably say that's the easiest way to do mm. it. Like just look for something temporary first because 
I mean, pictures on Airbnb does not tell you how you would feel when you true. get into uh, an apartment. There That's might be true. some large construction sites beside yeah. the place, like what happened to me when I came. <laughs> and then you have it's to look true. for another place. Yeah. So I would just say like maybe you find short term mm -hmm. on Airbnb on the other platform you mentioned. And then when you come, then you start to go and visit like yeah. you do apartment viewings and visits and then um apply for the ones you want apply sorry for saying apply because that's not how it works here in germany you apply for and then they decide whether or not to take you i mean that. you and one million other uh -huh. people and then you have to submit your um your employment contract your pay slip uh, certificate from your previous landlord that you've never owed you have to submit your credit score certificate wow. like then you apply sometimes you have to like you have to write like a letter to apply mm -hmm. and then maybe they choose 10 people and then from the 10 people they they, they feel sorry maybe for one of you <laughs> so <laughs> the fact that you have money in germany does not does mean not, that you will get do you have to the do apartment um the there was one in um, apartment viewing i went for one time and the landlady i was actually interviewing people mm. and the queue was crazy like it was wow. ridiculous <laughs> and, and she was like only people that speak German. So she was trying to see if people speak German and she was interviewing me. I was like, the apartment was not even that nice. I got my I got a nicer apartment later on. But anyway, the way I don't know how I went into this whole Germany tangent. I have a tendency to compare everything to Germany. <laughs> if you're new here, my channel, like I have a lot of German content on my channel. But the point I'm trying to make is that um yeah if you have the money here your money determines how, what kind of thing you will get right mm, yeah. and um let's speaking about prices do you can you share with us like what are the what's the budget range mm. for um prices for for accommodation in in, in nairobi in, because okay. we, we are in nairobi right now so yeah. we're speaking about nairobi specifically so i think it depends on the area that you live in because i feel like um nairobi there's you know the central business district and then there are places like Westlands and Parklands and you know closer to offices and things like that. Yeah. So if you rent out if you rent an apartment in these areas, it might be more expensive than say if you lived on the outskirts, for example. Mm -hmm. So I feel like um you could find I, I'll say the range maybe could be from three hundred dollars to it could be upwards of like even three thousand dollars for um for an apartment in in for, or for a house mm. in Nairobi, okay. so it really depends on where you live, actually. Okay, so we're gonna talk about cost of living. Okay. Watch the next video. We're gonna film the video. <laughs> I've not filmed it yet, but watch the next video. We're gonna talk about cost of living in um, in Kenya, Nairobi to be specific, and we'll go more into the details in that video. So let's move on to the next question. So let's talk about let's talk about making friends and leisure activities in okay. kenya because in we all know <laughs> easy. we all know that a big part of moving to a new country as a foreigner is that you have to start your social circle, circle all over again you yeah. have to create what you have to do um extracurricular activities so what's been your experience making friends and your like the leisure activity opportunities living in nairobi or living in kenya so I think that as a maybe it's just me and my personality, but I feel like as an adult, it's so difficult making friends. But in Kenya, it's I mean, it's it's not that bad because Kenyans are naturally like friendly yes. and open, so mm -hmm. it's a bit easy to make friends. And for me, what has helped me is um, joining group tours. <laughs> So the, when I first came in, I, I used to go hiking with this girls hiking group mm -hmm. and I think that I made some connections with some people in those groups mm -hmm. and also um, I also tag along with my husband when my husband has like work um, functions and then I meet people there as well um, as well as just people in the expert community there's you know one one thing happening every other weekend or something so mm -hmm try to attend those and i think it's i think it's been it's been good like it's slow but yeah it, it's so fine. so how many friends since you've been living here for two yeah. years huh? <laughs> my, my husband is my best friend <laughs> oh come on how many friends yeah tell us tell us tell us uh, okay. i'm just joking you don't have to tell us on the internet no, no. I, I have a few i have a few it's it, it's not been so isolated it's been quite nice yeah so would you say like there's a difference between making friends with kenyan people mm -hmm. like kenyans and making friends with other foreigners like you or there's no difference because everybody's just open generally 
Mm, I think there's a difference because obviously you're more just because of that familiarity you have like um for example i have some nigerian friends here and we're friends because we're nigerians it's, it's just there mm -hmm. and then i also have some friends that are experts and we're friends because we share that feeling of being away from your home country yes. so i feel like they're just levels of relationships that um, i can't really compare they're all equally important is mm -hmm. what i would say mm -hmm. so and what about the um... Mm, travel opportunities in Kenya. Oh my yeah. goodness, I feel like that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite thing about Kenya. It's such an amazing country to live in. Like the travel potential. As a travel blogger, it's like my dream country because there's just so many things to do, so many places to visit. Like we've been here for almost three years and we've still not been everywhere there is oh to go God. in kenya and we've been to a lot of places oh wow so it's been really it's been really amazing i feel like kenya has everything like you have the city life in nairobi in mombasa you have like mountains mount kenya you have so many hiking opportunities and then you have like stunning gorgeous beaches you went to watamu recently right? watch my yeah. watamu <laughs> vlog okay like <laughs> Yeah, like killing it i have so much kenya content coming for you guys you have no idea like i was i'm just i was trying to keep it like okay yeah. this is an interview let's keep it like oprah ish <laughs> i wish <laughs> no but like honestly i can agree with her because that's why i asked the question because just i'm just visiting and it's amazing <laughs> amazing like yeah. i have this pressure to do everything before i leave but it's impossible because yeah, i'm just here just so for a very limited amount of time on holiday so yeah um let's we are you, you can tell that we're obsessed with travel and yeah. <laughs> so if we if you let us we'll keep talking about the travel opportunities yeah. um endlessly so let's talk about the next area which is security and safety okay. one of the things before i um came to kenya was um reading about safety and security especially in nairobi that is not very safe and all but i want to hear from someone who's lived here for almost three years what's the safety and security situation like for you especially as a woman mm. so i mean i i wouldn't say that i can let me just put a disclaimer because i feel like my experience obviously is going to differ mm -hmm. and it's not the same for everyone's ex um everyone it's not the same for everyone yeah. essentially and i'm also coming from lagos which <laughs> which is you know let's just put that into perspective so for me in living in kenya living in nairobi I have felt safer <laughs> than living in Lagos. This is just my personal experiences. And this is not to say that Nairobi is without crime because there's still some activities, questionable activities that happen here. Um, but I think I'm also generally a very safety, I mean, I try to be a safety conscious person. Yeah. So as a woman in Kenya, or anywhere else, you wouldn't mm. see me like walking on the street at night alone, why? Um, yeah, because I mean, it's it's just my own preference. Like I'm 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 a scaredy cat, so <laughs> I prefer to be like indoors. Yeah. Um. Even like using my phone in traffic, things like that. I mean, coming from Lagos, where they can just like, I think that happens here as well. Yes, I heard. Yeah. I heard. So I wouldn't do that. Um. We've had like a few minor incidences where you know things were taken from our car or something like that. Oh. So it's not like zero it's, it's not like crime is zero here but i would say as a person who's lived here for a while i feel safe enough <laughs> yeah but you also have to be street like street smart and self-aware like you don't yeah. walk alone in a dark path in the night or yeah. or I even in a bright path in the night <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i think these are just like um general safety tips that you would apply everywhere else mm. um obviously there's some places i felt like you know safer to walk at night um yeah for me i, I just don't do that in kenya I'm, mm. I'm more conscious about my environment more conscious about security in mm. kenya but i do feel safe here right so that's, it. that's that's very good to hear yeah. to wrap this video up i always like to ask people when i travel to new places and i meet people who have been living there one of my favorite questions is if you had if you leave Kenya mm -hmm. and you had another opportunity to come back to Kenya, would you do it? And if yes, why? If no, why? Oh, I think I absolutely would come back. Um, I I also do see myself living here long term if you know if work permits and if everything aligns well. But I think I would come back to Kenya. I feel like it's 
such a nice country to live in you know the weather is nice almost all year round and again lots of places to visit and like we're in Nairobi now but maybe if we come back we could live somewhere on the beach like there's, there's lots of experiences oh to my be god had, so like dream I would, come true <laughs> i'll definitely come back i think where on the coast would you if you had to choose like if you want to work somewhere on the mm -hmm. coast what part what city or town it's not really a city what town on the coastal part of kenya would you choose well my favorite place is watamu so i feel like oh. i'm gonna defer <laughs> defer to watamu but i feel like diani is also I, mombasa would probably be the most reasonable um, the, um town to live in because it's like a city city it's not like a mm -hmm. sleepy town or something like right. that but i would prefer to live in watamu because it's just so gorgeous and so beautiful it's not it's more beautiful than diani beach i think it is but wow. maybe, maybe i'm gonna find out i'm going to diani. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> watch my watamu and diani <laughs> vlog okay <laughs> then you'll know what i really think if, after just two vlogs then you'll know what i really think oh there was one thing i wanted to ask that i forgot about sure. so sorry this video is not ending just yet i want to talk about food because food is also an important part of living in a new country sure. so um what's the food experience been like for you do you eat more like local food or you eat more like foreign food and what's it like like uh is it possible to get your own like ingre ingredients for your own local cuisine mm. in kenya yes yeah, so i think um i've not really explored kenyan food as much i mean outside the normal matoke ugali and and those kind of foods i don't think i've I've explored Kenyan food as much. So we usually make most of, we, we prepare most of our food at home. Mm -hmm. And it's easy enough to get like ingredients that we need. Like you can get that in um, just the regular stores, Carrefour and Co. Mm -hmm. And I believe there are also West African markets here, but I feel like everything I need, I, I can easily get them. So it's it's been it's been quite good. And there are also lots of Nigerian restaurants in Ken in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So I I don't feel like I miss home food a lot. But yeah, it's it's been okay. Right. And Kenya is very um it's the right word intercontinental. Like you can find basically any kind of food that you want. Good. Yeah. That's okay. good. So um thank you very much, Amarachi, for sharing your experience your thoughts with us on this channel and if you've watched this video up till this point thank you so much for watching i hope you found this video helpful if you'd watched this video up till this point i always do this in every of my video leave this comment in the comment section so that i know that you watched up till this point what should i say now i didn't prepare any sentence <laughs> i didn't prepare any sentence but you can say something like kenya is such a beautiful country i would like to go to the coast yes that's what you should say i'll put it on the screen put it in the comment section so i know you watched up to this point and you are the real mvp thank you again for watching and don't forget to give this video you guys a thumbs up <laughs> because i be traveling around the world looking to gather information for you guys <laughs> so give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next video bye